Hey everybody. So the other day I picked up these Molotow uh, art masking liquid pump pens and um, I thought I'd try them out using watercolors. Uh, I'd imagine you could probably use them for acrylics as well. That shouldn't be a problem. Although I'd want to be very careful not to use uh, acrylics heavily because it might bury the masking fluid because this goes down pretty thin. Um, I'm going to talk about these briefly in just a moment, give you some ideas of what they can and can't do, and uh, we'll look at uh, a piece I'm working on using these, all right? So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to talk about these um, Molotow paint pens, but these are not paint pens. These are art masking liquid pump markers. And they come in four millimeter and two millimeter sizes. And like I mentioned before, it's a simple pump mechanism. You just pump it a few times and you get this blue liquid. And um, it dries after a few minutes. And once it's dry, you can put paint over it uh, as I, I've done a little watercolor here just real quickly uh, on, on this little sampler page and then once the watercolor is dry you can peel it off and there you go see it masked out a nice little area just like that without a problem okay so I know you guys have probably dealt with stuff like this before the reason I think that these are kind of neat is usually liquid mask comes in a big jar or whatever and you're using a paintbrush, and that works good for large areas, but it can get a little tricky in smaller, tight areas. Now, a couple of things I learned with these particular liquid mask pens. First, don't use a vinyl eraser to try to pull it up. Uh, I found that this will just immediately smudge and smear the masking liquid and actually drive it into the paper. This might not be as big a problem with, let's say, illustration board, but with my watercolor paper, it became a big problem right away. It just became a smeary mess that got harder and harder to get out of the paper. So avoid using vinyl erasers. On a hard surface paper like this Post-it, it just comes up with your finger really nice and easy, no problems. Um, if you're working on a painting, especially a watercolor painting, if you rub, your fingers are going to get dirty with the paint and it's going to wind up in the area that you're trying to keep clean, so you don't want to do that. What I found works really well is, um, the, this is a Faber-Castell, Castile, Castell, whatever it is, that's the brand name. This is an erasing pencil. It's a very stiff eraser material, you know, very hard, very stiff. And uh, it's also white, so it won't stain your paper if you have to rub. It's also uh, great for watercolors and, and alike because you can literally lift some of the watercolor if you need to uh, because they're, they are slightly abrasive. But these work really good for pulling up the mask quick and easy and keeping things nice and clean because it just pulls up the mask and then you can work the area if you need to to get up any uh, odd toning or anything like that. little brush on the back side. I definitely suggest using a brush for cl your cleaning because again your fingers are going to get dirty especially with watercolors and pencil and stuff like that so just use a brush like that boom fantastic uh, another thing you don't want to do with the uh, Molotow is um, you don't want to do large areas I found that doing large areas it uh, not so great. 
it, it, this is much better for small areas. If you want to do big areas, get yourself a jar of, of, of watercolor mask, something like that. These are great for small areas because you can do letters very easily. Uh, I did lettering the other day, just quick and easy like that. Let it dry, color over it, peel it up. Fantastic. So this is really good for something that, you know, you're only going to do small areas. Again, this is four millimeter, millimeter, millimeters. Wow, tough day with the mouth. Um, this one's four millimeters. This one's two millimeter, you know. So you can get down to some pretty small little dots and lines by not putting a lot of pressure down. And um, for that purpose, they work great. And they're also very portable, which you know, a big jar of masking medium and a brush that you're going to have to, you know, clean and or whatnot, or the masking medium is going to destroy it, can be a problem in itself. So, that all said, um, let's take a look at this piece that I've been working on. What I've already done is I've put down liquid mask in a bunch of areas that I want to create as a highlight and what I'm actually going to be doing instead of just going to bare white, well in some areas I'll be doing bare white, is I'm creating a large area and then when I recoat this with another coat of black I'm going to actually wind up with two shades of black but it's going to have a defined edge which can create a very, um, uh, the look of metallics or painted, something painted, you know, when you have that high gloss paint that you get those reflections that have defined edges as opposed to soft edges. And that's kind of what I'm kind of messing around with here. So uh, I've already put a lot of that masking liquid in a bunch of areas all over this. I'm going to pull some of it up just to give you an idea of I don't know how well you can see those small areas like that but we'll do some bigger areas here another thing be sure if you if you're doing watercolors or acrylics or whatever be sure that um, it's well dried because this eraser, if the paper is moist, it will tear it up something fierce. When possible, try to go in one direction. You know, don't go back and forth, which I've already done a little bit of, but it's better to go in one direction. Now, when I put down my uh, first color on the chrome areas here, my chrome areas were also blue, so it got a little tricky to see what was masking material and what was paint. Do the headlight here, you'll probably be able to see that real well. Okay, so let me zoom in on that. Move that over just a little bit more. All right, so you can see that that has a very defined edge. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another little spot of the masking material where I'm going to overlay this white area and this black area simultaneously and when I put another coat of black over this when I pull up that mask I'm gonna wind up with three shades piled on top of each other and then I can put a little spectacular white highlight and that's gonna look a lot like something that's been painted and uh, the type of reflections that you would get so I'm going to go off camera for just a minute while I take all the rest of the masking material off 
and reapply some more in certain areas and we'll take a look at that process all right be back in a little bit okay so i've applied a second coat of masking material leaving white areas that i uncovered from the first round of masking and uh, what I have is uh, I have these little cups of color that I made up and if I put down one coat of color I know I get a certain tone once it's dry if I put it down twice it gets a little bit darker and so forth so I have a pretty good idea of how um, adding a, a second coat over this coating is going to turn out because this is about three coats here that's fairly heavy and when I put another coat of this black down on top of that it's going to be uh, pretty light now before I do the black I'm going to do my blues on the chrome work and this blue is very pale compared to my first round of blues so it um, shouldn't leave behind a heck of a lot of color but it should be less white than the actual paper is I've uncovered most of it but I've left a few so that when I uncover it you'll be able to see the effect I'm talking about so I'm going to get in good and close on this chrome here and you can see that there's a purple a very pale blue and then the blue of the uh, masking liquid so I'm going to uncover those let's get back in frame here get really zoomed in that's it that's as far as I can zoom but maybe you can see that there's that really pale blue going into white along the edge of the, right there and that makes a kind of natural chrome look now when I put in some uh, sharpie white pen in a couple of spots I can just do some little little dots and it'll create spectacular highlights and it'll just look super good let me uh, do the fork area here you see how that just comes right up and we'll do the tank get it in frame there we go Again, this is going to be a pretty big area. But you can see I have one, two, three, four tones. Now I'm going to cover that with another black wash. And that tone will here, this white tone will be lighter than this tone and lighter than that tone and lighter than that tone. And then when I put a spectacular highlight in there, it's going to have instant depth. Uh, I've done the same thing with her boots. If I scrub this off here. You can see that I've got multiple tones going. All right, so I'm going to finish scrubbing this off. I'm going to coat these areas that I was talking about in the black paint job. And then we're going to put some highlights in and take a look at what we've got. If you look at the gas tank in this area here, you'll see there's at least three to four different tones of black creating a sense of depth that you would normally have in a paint job. Uh, right in these areas of the chrome I've got colors on top of colors various forms of highlights some of them are light purples on top of dark purples or whites on top of blues you know and some of them are very close to being the same shade of blue 
Uh, overall, I think that gives a nice chrome effect, but it's when you start adding in your white highlights that, you know, your super, super highlights, if you will, that things start to really take off. So I'm going to shake up my uh, favorite Sharpie paint pen. These are extra fine point, water-based. Make sure you get water-based. And I'm going to put in some super highlights. But before I do that, I'm going to mention something that I did not know until I started working on this particular project. And thank goodness I had let this dry for well over 12 hours before I started coloring it. I um, frequently use, and some of you guys do too, use these high-tech gel pens by Pilot. Little black gel pens made by Pilot. And uh, we, as artists, uh, a lot of us use these for when you were doing alcohol markers like the Copec markers because these resist the alcohol markers really well. But guess what? They don't resist water worth a damn. Uh, this was scribbled really quickly because I thought I saw something going on in my drawing. So I scribbled this really quickly, waited about 10 minutes, put some water on it, and sure enough, it bleeds out something fierce. This piece dried for 12 hours or more, and there are spots where it started to bleed out the black. So I had to be very careful not to oversaturate or over scrub any area that had the black pen. Uh, once water was applied to it, dried, it seemed to be less uh, prone to bleeding, but initially it was pretty obvious that the brush was just picking up black and putting it into my colors. So that was a problem. So if you're doing watercolors in particular, remember to use a pen that is waterproof and these gel pens are not. That's the uh, Pilot High Tech C. Is that in focus? Yeah, Pilot High Tech C. Great gel pen for working with Copex, bad for working with watercolors. Although you could probably go over the watercolor without a problem. Anyways, getting back to what we were doing, I'm gonna start putting in some highlights here and we'll see what that looks like. As you can see, I'm just blasting these in fast and dirty. I'm not being too particular about it. I just want some nice spectaculars here and there. A couple of things that I'm sure my real biker friends will call me on on this particular illustration is one anyone that's familiar with the Bridget Bardot poster where she's sitting on the motorcycle like this first of all it was a flat head it wasn't a pan head uh, the other thing that they're gonna give me a bad time about is I didn't put in a Kickstarter well I just didn't feel like it so I didn't do it I thought eh, it really doesn't need to be there I'm not trying to make a super detailed illustration. I'm just trying to make something that looks cool. And uh, let's face it, the Kickstarter pedal covers up a lot of stuff when you're trying to illustrate. So I just didn't want to cover up a lot of stuff that would look cool. So I'm putting spectacular highlights in the chrome. Putting in some spectacular highlights for spokes and the chain and other things. 
and stuff. And you can see that anywhere that the color is fairly dark, because this will dry not 100% pure white it'll, unless you coat it a lot. It will blend in pretty well, but it will give you some really nice highlighting. Now we're going to put some studs on her collar, which again, she was not wearing a collar in the original. I don't care. Yeah, I'm liking the look of that. A few more highlights in the paint job there. All right. zoom in and take a look there we go now I, you can see in the gas tank I've got multiple layers of tone and yeah you could do this just by brushing the paint waiting for it to dry and then brushing it again and uh, but that kind of slows down the process you know like in her thighs I, I just I didn't use any masking there. I just used a brush and put down one tone, let it dry, put down another tone, let it dry, and you know. But it slows down the process. Whereas doing masking, especially in really tight areas like these exhaust pipes, you know, it's so much easier to use a mask than it is to uh, try to do it all by brush. So there she is, she's all done.